Welcome to 7 easy ways to speed up your WordPress website. You're probably wondering what this guy here with a strange accent is telling you about WordPress. First of all, I don't have a computer science degree. I learned everything by myself. I've optimized hundreds and hundreds of websites. And initially it was mainly through trial and error, to be honest with you. And it was more error than trial. Um, I've learned a lot of things along the way. And um, I know now really well what works and what doesn't work. And I've decided to create that video to help you save some time and help you avoid the mistakes that I made initially. Do you agree that it's important to have a fast loading website? Amazon looked into the relationship between page abandonment and load speed, and they found out that they can increase their sales by 1% for every 100 millisecond that their site loads faster. Before changing anything on your website, I highly recommend that you first do a backup and that you establish a baseline. You can use a tool like ggmetrics or ping them to establish a baseline so that you know where you are. All right, let's get started. Tip number one is to use a caching plugin to serve static content to your visitors. When a WordPress website is loaded, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. PHP functions are running, MySQL database queries, and by using a caching plugin, you can reduce some of the load time and just serve a ready-made static version of your website to your visitors. I highly recommend W3 Total Cache, and I use it most of the time. And I want to show you how to set it up. Um, you go here under Performance, General Settings. And we want to enable Page Cache. Disk Enhance is good here as a choice. Minify reduces load time by compressing um, your JavaScript and CSS files. However, it's not always a good idea because sometimes your hosting provider already does that type of work. Also, if you have a CDN, you may not need it. So um, I'll turn it off for now. But if you keep it on, uh, set the minify mode to auto, but like I said, I'll keep it off for now. Similar is with database caching. Sometimes your um, hosting provider is already doing database caching. So I recommend you check with your hosting provider regarding um, Minify and database caching before you proceed. Object caching only makes sense for really um, highly dynamic sites, so we're going to turn that off. Browser cache is definitely something we want to leave on. So we're going to just hit save all settings here. The next tip I have for you is to use a CDN to distribute load. What a CDN does, it spreads your images, your JavaScript, your CSS files on a lot of different servers. If for example, somebody from Australia is coming to your website, the visitor will grab the images and CSS files and everything from a server local to them in Australia. So reducing the distance and you're also reducing the speed to deliver the files and thus speed up your website. I really like um, W3 Total Cache because it also provides um, an option to add um, a CDN here. In this case, I always recommend Mac CDN. It's affordable and one of the most established ones. So you want to enable that setting here, hit the save button, and then go to the CDN settings here on the left side. The one thing we do want to enable is add canonical headers that will help with some prevention of duplicate content. And here it's so easy to um, sign up for Mac CDN. You just click on create pull zone and you can um, directly create a pull zone here. I'm not going to walk you through the entire process as I already set it up here, but it's fairly easy to set up Mac CDN. It's definitely something I'll recommend you do. Just keep in mind that you first back up all your data. I've done those changes that we just mentioned. I added um, W3 Total Cache and Mac CDN to a website here, agamepodcast.com. And you can see a really dramatic improvement here from 3.8 seconds to 400 milliseconds. It's fairly easy to set up the caching plugin and a CDN, but this is probably one of the best ways to make a significant difference to your load speed. The next suggestion that I have for you is to shrink large images. There are two ways to do it. You can use a plugin, WP Smash, that does it automatically, but there are some limitations, or you have to do it manually with an editor, such as Pixlr or you know, Adobe Photoshop, for example. So let's look a little bit more into detail here. This website here, or this post here from a website that I use, has 2.7 megabytes. And under Pingdom, when you select, um, when you do a speed test, it's like page analysis, 
you can see the size per content. So in total of 1.2 megabyte of images. And that's quite a lot of images. So there you can see there is some room to improve and reduce the size of images. Like I said, there are two options. Let's first look into using the plugin. I already installed WP Smush here. You could just go to settings. And this is always set when you install it by default. Smash images and upload means it will reduce and optimize images. You can also smash existing images in bulk. I've done that before, and unfortunately, there is only so much um, that WP Smash can do. If you have a couple of really large images, several megabytes, there's no way around to reduce the size manually. Like I said, you can use Photoshop or Pixlr, which is a completely free tool. Um, Pixlr allows you to um, edit images, which so is click on open image from computer. Um, we have this one, German. That's a very big image. You can see 2.3 megabytes, 1,500 by 844 dimensions. It's a huge image. We're going to open it. And now under image size, I can reduce the width, let's say, to 800. And make sure that the we constrain the proportions here. And now, if we, when we save the picture back to our hard drive, you can see that it's now 1,000 kilobytes, around about one megabyte. You can still further reduce the size, but this is already quite a good improvement. And what WP Smash is doing is only optimizing existing images. So if it's 300 pixels wide, it's going to be 300 pixels wide because WP Smash doesn't know what size you actually need, what dimensions you need. So it's only it's very constrained. It's only optimizing it within those limits, and by using another tool, uh, Photoshop or so, you can really reduce the size. Just make sure that the resolution is still good and looks still good to your users. I've done that here on uh, the Amstrad blog post that I mentioned earlier. For example, this picture reduced from 380 kilobytes to 170. I've done another speed test, and you can see there has been some improvement here. Not as dramatic as with the CDN that I showed you earlier. If you have a lot of images, if you have three, four, five megabyte in page size, then I highly recommend reduce the size of some of those images. It also depends if it's your home page, which you want to load really fast, versus a blog post where it's acceptable, I think, to have a few nice images. The next tip that I have for you is to properly maintain your website. Let's just compare, for argument's sake, your WordPress site to a car. If you have a car, you have to do maintenance, such as oil change. If you have a really old car and you do an oil change, it won't become a Ferrari, but it will run faster and it's less likely that the engine will break. The same with the WordPress website. You need to do proper maintenance. Here are a couple of updates that need to be done. In total, there are seven updates. So I always recommend to update all plugins, update all themes, and of course, make sure that your WordPress website is updated yeah, make sure you always update it because outdated plugins can have old code and security holes and make the site more buggy. Another thing that I recommend is to completely delete unused plugins. I think we're all guilty of that. I'm definitely guilty there. Just installing some plugins, maybe deactivating them, but never really removing them. Every time a new WordPress website is loaded, the server is checking all plugins, including the deactivated ones. So I highly recommend delete all plugins Get rid of those old suckers and make sure your website, WordPress website is well maintained and fast. And that will also help your site to be more stable and less buggy. Does that make sense so far? Are you following me there? The next tip that I have for you is to reduce the dependency on external tools. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's look at another speed test here from a website. And as you can see, this website here on the time spent per domain it has a lot of other domains where it's pulling information. For example, here Infusionsoft, and um, Talk is a um, chatting plugin, and then it's also using Visual Website Optimizer. The, the, the site actually logs really fast with 1.89 seconds, but you can see there are a lot of other external domains. So one way to reduce your site's load speed is to look at all the other domains, see how much time they consume when they're being loaded. You can see that here under Waterfall, you can see how much time um, different steps take. You can also sort by um, load time, by file size, so by URL, for example, if you want to look at external URLs. So this is a great tool to use for your analysis. So removing external plugins, external tools is one way to speed it up. It's obviously a trade-off between functionality and speed, 
But if speed is the most important thing to you, then I highly recommend looking into all the other services that you use, such as heat maps. Tip number six, unnecessary redirect. What do you think? Do pe most people enter the www or just the bare domain these days? I think you're right. Most people just don't bother entering www anymore these days. So why do you have your website default to that domain? Here in this case, this website here um, is defaulted to www. So when somebody enters the um, bare domain, it takes, in this case, 136 milliseconds to redirect you to the www version. If most people don't bother entering the www, just default your domain to the bare domain and it will shave off a little bit of time here. You probably think I'm crazy here talking about hundreds of milliseconds, but yeah, if you really want to optimize your site, if you want to get a better load speed, you need to look at all different, you need to look at all different aspects and that is just one aspect. And that brings us to the last tip, switch your hosting providers. I'm aware that this is a lot of work, but if nothing else works, your hosting provider is just not the best and you need to look into switching it. All right, let's just do a quick analysis first to see if your hosting provider might be slow or not. I have a couple of speed tests here. For example, here, a test site that we're using. The site looks pretty good. 84 is a very good number here on Google PageSpeed Insights. However, under this one here, you see that um, your server responded in 1.3 seconds. So if Google suggests that your server is slow, your server is probably slow. You can also do another um, pingdom report. Here, for example, a site that I'm using, the initial load is very slow. It's waiting 703 milliseconds here, and I don't know what the server is doing, but this is another indication for a slow site. This site here, what we looked at earlier, is 4.2 megabytes big, which is pretty big, loads in 1.89 seconds, has a very low wait time in the beginning. So this is a site where you see which runs on a really good server, so I don't think there's a need here to switch to a different hosting provider. Now that you know in which situation it makes sense to switch, let's look at the recommended options. I have three recommendations for you, Pagely, WP Engine, and DreamHost. Pagely is the fastest provider. WP Engine is a good mix. It offers a lot of features, most features. It's very customizable, sometimes maybe even a little bit overwhelming. And DreamHost is just a good mix, uh, entry-level server for dedicated WordPress hosting. Pagely here starts at $64 a month, which is not really cheap. But yeah, like I said, if speed is the most important thing to you, this is the best provider to go with. Um, DreamHost is a great is a great choice here. They manage WordPress hosting at $19.95, very affordable and also very fast. And lastly, here we have WP Engine. WP Engine, as you can probably tell from the name, only does WordPress host hosting. Um, starting at $29 a month, which is not a bad price. And um, for one installation only, this is also a very, very good choice. If you're serious about speed improvement, then I invite you to take some action now. Get started. So often I see people are watching a video, learning something really good, and then don't do anything with it. Make a plan now, establish a baseline using Kingdom, or do a backup. That's always a good idea. But take some action right now and improve the speed of your WordPress site. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button. If you think others can benefit from it, then share it on social media. Thanks for watching.